This video is a battle of the pans. We're gonna go ahead and put up Hexclad, my tried and true pan for the last nine years against our place. You like badass shit? Well, here you go. This is the coolest innovation of our lifetime. This is the Our Place and Hexclad battle. This is the Always Pan Pro, the first ever stainless steel exterior and aluminum cord no coating non-stick technology with no forever PFAS, PTFE, or PFOA chemicals, a titanium interior 300% harder than stainless steel, and a heat resistance claim of 1000 degrees Fahrenheit. Is this a compelling pan that's worth the money? Let's check it out. This is the first video in a series I'll be doing about the R-Place and Hexclad pans. Hexclad has been around for many years, As a matter of fact, I've been using Hexclad for the last nine years and I absolutely love it. I've not been paid for this video. Nobody's given me anything. Our place did not give me this pan. I paid 195 bucks for this thing. I'm gonna put it to the test. The first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna season our pan. Now, one of the things that most people don't realize and complain about constantly in the Hexclad forums is eggs. Eggs are the bane of people's existence. They say they stick, it doesn't work, but at the end of the day, people don't know these are not normal pans you go and buy at Target, you fire them up nonstick, it's got a Teflon coating across the whole thing, and you just cook on it. You have to season these pans like you would cast iron, and if you scrub them down hard and you put them in dishwashers, you should re-season them again. It's a very quick process, but people just don't do it and they don't follow the directions. We're gonna talk about seasoning. That's the first thing we have to do. Then, after we do the seasoning, we're gonna go ahead and start our first cook in this series to see how both of these pans do when it comes to cooking different things such as vegetables and proteins. I'm also gonna do a temperature test to see how even the temperature is across these pans from the edge lip all the way down into the base of the pan because I'm curious how the temperature disperses across these. This Our Place pan is a multi-cladded pan with multiple layers, including what they say is not Teflon, but titanium and steel, which is different from Hexclad because Hexclad is a non-stick surface under here. It is a coating, but it is also topped by stainless steel, and that allows it to release the food. I need a pan that's reliable and dependable. So, is the Our Place a new Hexclad killer? Let's go ahead and check it out. We'll start with our seasoning and our first video in the series when we do our egg test and compare the heat and the release of that egg. Okay, that's got a bunch of oil in it. This time, with a lot of oil, it actually worked flawlessly. So there wasn't enough oil used in the pan. So this was hardly any oil, just a little bit, but I used more oil. It looks like that's not sticking at all. And it did release the egg. Now we're going for round two. I'm gonna add a little bit more oil this time. And we'll see if that helps with the sticking. Uh, it's not running. And now the test, I've got Little holes here, around here, so it tells me that it should be releasing. Let me go ahead and see if this is releasing okay. Oh, it did, wow, okay. Oh, I'm impressed, it actually worked this time. 
but you can see here these bubbles, which tells me it should be released, and it is sliding around pretty good. Um, let's go ahead and give it a flip. Now, before I wash the hex clad or any pan, you gotta let it cool down. Don't put a boiling hot pan into cold water. So it's cooled down now enough. We're gonna go and add some soap. It should clean really easy. Watch this. That's all it takes. That sucker is spotless. Next up is the R-Place pan. This pan is taking noticeably longer to cool down. Uh, incredible heat retention property for sure. Here's the cleaning process. We'll go ahead and see how easy it is compared to hex clad. A little soap and let's give it a washy washy. So super easy to clean, just like hex clad. We'll call that one a tie. So that was the cooking demonstration and introduction to the R-Place pan. Now I wanna talk about some of the features or distractions of this pan that I see. And I'm not sure why the creators or the inventor did this. I think it's useless. I think that they could have done without it and it would have made the pan even better. They integrated this spoon, which is a wooden spoon. Nothing special but it has a hole in it. And it sits here and goes into this groove like so, and then lets you put the top back on. Now, no one's gonna do this while cooking, I don't think. I certainly wouldn't do it with cooking. And you have to make sure that this is aligned up, because if you don't, it's gonna stick on the spoon and it's not gonna sit equally on the top. So as far as I'm concerned, it's a waste. The pan itself, I really do like. It's super heavy. I haven't done all the cooking yet on it, but so far the preliminary results are I have to use a little bit more oil, just a little bit more than hex clad, but I do like the fact this is titanium and steel. There's no nonstick coating in here, nothing like a Teflon or any of those other chemicals. So anything with a nonstick coating that's a chemical, obviously leaving out of your cookware is a great thing. I do think that the hex clad pan definitely is nonstick. I have even cooked with it with, I mean, barely any oil and it works fantastic. But I will say that the grooves on that are very shallow compared to the deeper grooves in this pan. I think the reason you need a little bit more oil is because you need to fill those grooves up a little bit to get that surface so that when the food does cook and that oil gets absorbed, it does cause that release. You do have to use more oil or more butter, but who's gonna complain about using more butter? I love butter. I do love the avocado oil. That's what I used on this pan. I use my hex clad pan. It's a high heat oil. It doesn't really burn. It has a super high smoke point. So you can cook eggs and other things on the stove like you saw without the hood going with all the smoke coming up. I even can cook bacon uh, without anything in my hex clad pan with no smoke. And I can do it in here as well. And that'll be another video that we're gonna show you cooking bacon. But back to the pan. I think that this top, it's a print magnet. I mean, you just touch this thing, look at this. And it's got, I don't know if you can see, it's got fingerprints all over it. It's just, it looks, it's gonna look hideous. It's gonna look like a, an absolutely filthy pan. Every time you grab it, touch it, put your hand on it. Why they didn't make it a matte finish, I don't know. I would have liked to see the top look like the inside of this pan. That would have been sexy as hell. I think it would have been much more practical. And most of the time, I don't use a top. And when I do, I use a top that has an air vent release. This one has a slot that goes in here like so. And it does have a release on the side. Now, obviously, if you have extremely violent smoke or heat coming out of this thing, I don't know what it's gonna do to your hand, especially if your hand is right here and this hot air is escaping on this. Sometimes when I'm in a rush, I'm in the kitchen cooking, you're moving fast, you might wanna grab a pan like this, and the last thing I wanna do is grab a pan and get my hand burned because steam is flowing out of this thing. Now you can take it and turn this like so, which then takes that space and reduces it, but still leaves that gap there for the steam to come out. Why they did this is because of the spoon. I'm not sure if that really is gonna cause a problem or not, but we'll do that in the other videos coming up. So for this pan so far with the non-stick, because of the non-stick, you have to use more oil in it. It has this gap right here that I'm concerned about that I'll be cooking with to see what happens when I get some liquid in here. I'm doing some simmering or even try to boil some stuff because it's really cool. This pan is kind of an all-in-one and you can definitely you know, boil water in here uh, not a lot, but you can do enough to do a small amount of pasta, some other things, especially some sauces. And I'm really curious to see what happens when the steam starts coming out of this slot. I'm gonna have a lot more videos coming up because there's nothing right now. If you look for our place and you Google it, 
there's no reviews. There's actually one that came up and it's a guy that basically bashes the pan, which is fine, but he didn't do any cooking with it. He just talked about it. Is the pan resilient? Is it gonna cook well? Is it really nonstick? Is it gonna hold up? How easy is it to clean? Can you put in the dishwasher? Those are the kind of things these videos are about to bring reality to a practical level without all the complications of chemicals and analysis of how things are layered together. This is a multi-clad pan. It does have steel. It does have titanium inside. And it is, I mean, it's heavy. It's definitely as heavy as probably my cast iron. And the reason I got the hex clad was because the cast iron is just too heavy to use in a kitchen when you have two or three pans and you're working for a lot of different people, cooking a lot of different food, which I do, it becomes almost untenable. And because of that wrist action, you start getting sore wrists. I think this is gonna be the same. This is a very heavy pan. So I'm not gonna hold it against it because I think that's uh, the thickness of the pan is very thick all the way up to the edges. It's very even and I haven't measured it with a micrometer, but I will go ahead and measure it at some point and compare the technical specifications of the hex clad versus the hour place. But for this video, I wanted you to see that it does actually cook well. It did do the nonstick. We had a little bit of problem in the beginning. I didn't use enough oil. And again, there's extensive instructions that come with this pan that talks about using a full teaspoon of oil in the pan. And when you're done cleaning it, you're supposed to coat it with a light oil and leave it that way as well. Now with avocado, there's no problem. But if you use things like flaxseed oil and some other oils, I could see that being a problem, leaving that on there because it will eventually get a residue. So. I'm a little concerned about the directions they gave people on how to actually put the pan away and store it. I don't think there's any reason you can't put it away with no, no oil on it. You'll just have to heat it up and get that oil hot again before you start cooking. I know the reason they're doing it is because they want people to make sure they absolutely follow the instructions so they don't have the sticking problem, which you saw that I have. You can absolutely not cook on this pan without any oil. It will absolutely stick. With the hex clad, with no oil at all, it will stick a little bit, but not a lot. It will definitely stick with eggs, as this will stick with eggs. And again, eggs is the number one complaint of anybody in the forums that use hex clad or other pans that the eggs stick, the pans suck. The pans don't suck. You do have to use oil and fats and butters in your cooking, especially when you start moving away from these chemicals and you get more to these multi-ply materials such as, in this case, stainless steel and titanium. So I'm okay with that. And avocado oil is healthy. Good whole butter is healthy. There's nothing wrong with it. We've been brainwashed. This stuff's really bad for you. But as we know, healthy oils and fats are not bad for you. Keep on watching. I hope you like and subscribe to this video because you're going to see a lot more Our Place and Hex Clad coming up soon. Until the next time, smoke on, baby. Does this smell? No, no smell. Just curious. Stainless steel and titanium. Never smelled it before.